All right, example nine is going to be another compound interest problem where we're solving for time. Okay, so let's read it. A married couple has $15,000 toward the purchase of a house. For the house that the couple wants to buy, a down payment of $20,000 is required. How long will the money have to be invested at 7% compounded quarterly to grow to $20,000? Okay, again, we saw this example uh, in example five. Okay, so if you flip back, uh, well, let me write on here. This was example 5J. Okay, so if we flip back to that, okay, it's right here. Okay, um, there's the problem. Uh, let's go back and notice we labeled this as compound interest. Let's go back and discuss why really quickly before we set it up and solve. Okay. So this married couple is trying to purchase a house. They need to have their down payment. Um, and the down payment is $20,000. They actually have $15,000 right now, but they're going to invest the $15,000 at 7% interest compounded quarterly. And they want that money, that $15,000 to grow to the $20,000. Okay, and they're just trying to figure out how much or how long that's going to take to happen. OK, so what's going on here is they are investing this one lump sum. OK, and so since they're uh, saving one lump sum in the savings account and having that grow, that makes this a compound interest problem. OK, all right. So we will be using the formula A equals P times one plus R over M raised to the M times T. OK. All right, so obviously from reading the problem, how long will the money have to be invested? Okay, that means we are looking for T. So this is another time problem, okay, which you just learned how to solve in example eight. Again, it's tricky, so we're going to do another one, okay? All right, let's label all the other variables. Okay, our interest rate is 7%, so convert that to a decimal. Um, the money is compounded quarterly, so that means M is four, okay? Um, and so we need the A and the P, we should know those, okay? So when you look at this one, remember, P is the amount of the original deposit. They are saving, they're depositing $15,000, okay? They want that to grow and uh, they wanna get a, an account balance of $20,000, okay? So the future value is 20,000, okay? All right, so we're gonna plug all of this in and then we're going to solve it, okay? All right, so let's set it up. We're gonna get 20,000 is equal to 15,000 times, whoops, times one plus 0 0.07 divided by four, raised to the four times T, okay, power. All right, so here we go. Um, we need to solve it for T, okay? Again, T is trapped in the exponent, okay? So you're gonna have to eventually use the logarithm, the natural logarithm to get it out of the power, okay? Um, at the top of the notes, okay, on this page, I went ahead and I wrote, rewrote the steps that you need to take to solve for time, okay? Remember step one, we're gonna isolate the thing raised to the power, okay? So let's go ahead and do that, okay? So once you have it set up this way, remember um, this quantity in parentheses, that's what's being raised to the power. That 15,000 is just hanging out front, okay? This thing in, that I have boxed in red here, it's multiplied by 15,000. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do to undo that is divide both sides by 15,000, okay? So I'm just gonna rewrite everything so we don't, you know, too many steps at once, might get you confused, don't wanna do that, okay? All right, so here we go. We're gonna divide both sides by 15,000, okay? All right, so then on the right side, 15,000 in the top, we'll cancel with 15,000 in the bottom. On the right side, we will just be left with the quantity in parentheses raised to the power, okay? All right, we need to go to our calculator and figure out what 20,000 divided by 15,000 is. 
Okay, make sure you got the right number of zeros here. Lots of zeros. Okay, so, ooh, look at this. Okay, so this is a situation, remember, you're gonna have to carry all the digits. Okay, so there's a lot of threes here. Um, you could, you're probably just better off working with the fraction form here, okay? Um, again, on your calculator, you can convert this decimal back to a simplified or reduced fraction. If you go to your calculator and you hit your math button, see my arrow circling? This is my math button. If I hit option one is to convert that to a fraction, so hit one, it'll take that decimal and convert it to a reduced fraction. So this whole fraction reduced to four thirds. Okay, so that's easier to work with. Okay, so the left side is four thirds. Okay, so the quantity that is being raised to the power is now isolated. The thing in parentheses is isolated. Okay, now what was your next step? Let's go back to the top. Okay, once we've isolated the thing raised to the power, now we're going to take the natural log of both sides. Because remember, the logarithm is the tool that is going to bring the t out of the power. Okay, so I'm going to go down here. Okay. Take the natural log of both sides. The natural log has to go on the left. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Okay, so I'm taking the natural log of both sides. Okay, all right. And now, okay, remember natural log of four thirds, that is going to be some nasty decimal when you plug it into your calculator. The natural log changes whatever it's operating on, okay? All right, so once you take the natural log of both sides, then you can go back up here. And the last thing you're going to do, and this is going to bring the T out of the power, you're going to apply the property where if you have the logarithm of something to a power, that power will come down out of the exponent. Okay, so let's go do that. Okay, so go back down here. Okay, on the right side, I have the natural log of something to a power. So I am allowed to take the power and bring it down. Okay, you cannot bring down the power without the logarithm. So that's why we had to do that. Okay, so let me move over here and get us some room. Okay, we're going to go back up to the top. Whoops. All right, so let's see. We're going to have... Tut, 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 tut. All right, we're going to have the natural log of 4 thirds is equal to 4t, that power comes down, times the natural log of 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 4. Okay, so the T is out of the power, which is great. Okay, all right. Again, remember the things we learned about solving for time. Okay, um, we are left with the natural log of four thirds on the left. That is going to be a nasty decimal when you plug it in. Okay, four T is being multiplied by this other logarithm. Okay, natural log of one plus 0 0.07 divided by four. When you stick that in the calculator, that is going to be a nasty decimal. Okay, they are just, those logarithms are just numbers, okay? When you solve, when you're solving for time here, you're not going to solve for the t value. You're going to solve for the m times t, okay? So here, we want to solve for the 4t quantity, okay? So 4t is being multiplied by this logarithm over here, okay? So you need to divide by, oops, you need to divide by this logarithm, okay? to get the 4t by itself. And then whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So this is the correct way to do the division here, okay? And then on the right, this logarithm will cancel with this logarithm. It will leave you with 4t on the right, and then you're gonna have to go to your calculator and divide these two logarithms, okay? All right, so here we go. Go to our calculator, okay? Remember, we're solving for 4t, not 4. Do not divide by the 4, okay? All right, so here we go. Let's go to our calculator. We're going to do, I'll go ahead and clear this. We're going to do the natural log of 4 thirds, close the parentheses, divide by the natural log of 1 plus 0 0.07, divided by 4, close parentheses, okay? And that is going to give us this number, okay? So let's go ahead and go write this down, okay? Remember, we're solving for time. This is a time value, not a dollars and cents amount, okay? Let's go back over here. Let me write down what I got. 
All right, so here we go. So something like this. Okay. All right, so remember what you do. The other thing we learned about time, not only do you have to solve for 4t, okay, but you also have to round this number up to the next whole number, okay? So the 16.58, blah, 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 it is going to round up to 17. You have to round it up. You always round up time to the next whole number, okay? Now you stop and interpret your answer, okay? So because there is a 4 in front of the T, this is telling us that we're measuring time in quarters, okay? So it is going to take this couple 17 quarters to save up for their down payment, okay? So that is the answer. That is one way of expressing the answer, okay? Again, quarters are hard for us to think in, okay? Every day, you know, everyday life, we don't really talk about quarters unless, you know, we're in business, okay? But since everything was quarterly here, that's how the answer came out, okay? Again, if you go back and you look at the original question, it doesn't specify how you need to state the answer, okay? So you could just say 17 quarters. If you wanted to make more sense of this, um, we could convert this to a yearly amount, okay? Um, so I'll go back and I'll do that over here. If we took 17, well, remember we have 17 is equal to 4t. That's where we left off. If we went ahead and divided it by the four, okay, that is going to give us a yearly amount because then you'll actually have solved for t instead of 4t. So 17 divided by 4, remember you've got to round up that time. It's imperative. You can't skip that step because you have to make sure you have enough time, okay? So 17 fourths is 4.25, okay? And so this would be 4.25 years. Oops, this thing is acting crazy right now. So it would be 4.25 years, okay? Again, notice the difference, okay? If I have a 4T on the right side, that's referring to 17 as being measured in quarters, okay? But if I go ahead and I divide off the four over here, okay, then this is a yearly number, okay? Um, so this is another way you can express the answer, 4.25 years, okay? Um, you could, remember, four is the whole number there, so it's going to take four and one quarter years, okay? You could do also, so here's another way you could do it. You could say 0.25, that's that little decimal part, okay? Multiply it by 12 months in a year, okay? So you could do 0.25 times 12, okay? That's three, okay? Um, so, you know, this is saying that 0.25 part of a year is three months, okay? So this could be four years three months, okay? These are all ways of, these are all the same ways of expressing the same amount of time, okay? If you get confused, just leave it as 17 quarters, okay? Um, but if you're trying to make sense of it in your own mind, like how long is this, okay? You could take the 17 quarters and try to convert it to years, which would be the four whole years and then a quarter of another year, okay? Um, so. Again, these are all acceptable answers, okay? Um, so hopefully that's given you another example of how to solve for, for time here where you have to isolate the quantity that's being raised to the power and then you have to take the natural log of both sides and then you have to, to bring the power down in front, okay? All right, let's move on to example 10.